This is the Benjamin Zulu Global. Welcome our viewers from all over the world to the home of the heart matters. We converging to learn together because when you know better, you can do better. And a better life is what we all want. Better work life, better family life, better personal life. Remember, we've always said that most of us are walking around with unhealed wounds, right? Be they mother who wounds, father wounds, all right? Colleagues have wounded us, relationships have wounded us, and we have not healed yet. Until, my dear listener, you actually get into contact with somebody, that is when you will know how far you've gone in terms of healing. That is why we are always saying, if you are in the pool, swimming. It takes somebody on the edge to tell you how far you are swimming. If you are swimming in the deep end, you have to be told, my dear listener. And that is now where Benjamin Zulu comes in, my dear listener. And he's coming in through this beautiful conference that he has organized, my dear listener. Healing and unveiling your best self. Right? This is it. Some of us are stuck in our careers and we don't know what is actually uh, haunting us. Maybe there are those traumas that we've actually we are battling with. Some of us, our relationships are not working because of the trauma trauma that we have actually harbored in our bodies that are revealing themselves in our relationships. That is why time has come, my dear listener, where you need to have your, uh, you have this chance, my dear listener, to actually heal. That is why this conference is coming your way, okay? It is going to be on the 10th of June, 2023, my dear listener, right from 10 a.m. all the way to 5 p.m. at Utali Hotel. Remember, uh, the number to call 011. 58 95 67. Call that number for booking, or you can also get in touch with Benjamin Zulu Global. That is on Facebook, on Instagram, also. My dear sister, just inbox him and he will direct you on how you're gonna uh, book that. But in the meantime, call 0 uh, 11 58 95 67. 0 11 58 95 67. That is the number to call. But most importantly, Benjamin is here. Good morning, my brother. Good morning. Happy to see you. Happy to see you, man. And we are discussing a topic that can save lives. Exactly. Let's talk about the narcissism in the workplace. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Because narcissistic depletion is an incident that happens when the narcissistic person mm. has run out of supply. The person they were bullying left. Okay. Managed to escape. Uh -huh. So they act like they are depressed. And because the general public does not understand narcissism, mm -hmm. they treat it like depression by showing mercy. You go back to the person, yeah. you try to help them, you lift them back to their feet, yeah. only for them to go back to the same megalomon megalomonia behavior like merciless, don't care, selfish, cannot accept responsibility, gaslighting you, reverse guilting you, yeah. and colliding you with people, you know, smear campaigning and doing such blatant injustice, lying pathologically. Right. And they're doing all this while outside they are painted a picture of being an angel mm -hmm. so that you are isolated in your suffering. And there's nobody who can agree with you because they have a lot of energy to invest in isolating you from people, telling people you're crazy. Mm -hmm. And another method they use is reactive abuse. They prick your nerves, telling you what they know, get to you until you explode and react physically. Mm -hmm. Then they capture that physical reaction. They go to police, get a P3, they go to uh, hospital, they call ambulance to make you look like you're the crazy one. Mm -hmm. So, narcissism in the workplace has not been discussed enough. When you have an organization that is abusive, you can be broken down quietly. Yeah. At home, your family life is okay, your marriage is okay, people don't hear you being beaten up, and yet you are being destroyed by your workplace. Mm -hmm. So many people today are hospitalized or in medication or deteriorating their health because they're in a very abusive workplace, but nobody is discussing saying, what does it mean to obey your bosses versus being abused mm -hmm. by your bosses? Yeah, that is true. You can have a culture that is very... Um, Backward. You can have a whole environment, a whole company culture mm -hmm. that does not want you to succeed. Mm -hmm. You are a radio presenter, but you try to start pig farming in Webuye and they are on your case. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you bought three pigs. They got wind. Yes, I have three pigs. Guru <laughs> You <laughs> They saw a picture of your mother yes. with the pigs. Yes. And you say, here is my mother and my new project. <laughs> Now you have been summoned to the disciplinary city. Yes. <laughs> that 
<laughs> you're bringing conflict. And you ask them, where is the conflict? They can't explain. You went to your TikTok to enjoy with your fans. Yeah. They say now you are already at some... They don't want to see you expanding. Yeah. One characteristic of these uh, narcissistic organizations yeah. is that they have people who have uh, become local kingpins. You do their bidding. Not the, not the contract. Not the results. Not output not no no not bring the money or results or numbers or what really your contract is about yeah. it becomes about being in the right books with them mm-hmm. when you think of your future in that company you don't think of expanding taking initiative bringing new product bringing new people going out of your way you think of will the boss agree this will they like how will they react so you you narrow your life and the problem with the companies, they abuse you using the, the boiled frog syndrome. Mm-hmm. When they're bringing you in, they're very friendly. Yeah. Then they raise the temperature ever so slowly, slowly. that mm-hmm. you don't realize you're being boiled. Yeah. <laughs> you are able to jump or resign any time, but you don't think you should. Mm-hmm. Changing jobs is disruptive. And, 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 and if you're unwise enough to have taken car loan, house loan, mm-hmm. the other loan, mm-hmm. asset loan, you are helping the creditor to keep you pressed in the wrong environment. Yeah. Bramwell avoid loans. They take away your freedom. Exactly. You have committed for six years of paying this amount of money every month. For those six years, you can't interrupt your job. Mm-hmm. You can't live and take your, give yourself three months to look for another one. Yeah. Maintain your freedom. In fact, one of the ways somebody was explaining how to gain your freedom, narcissism depends on your dependency. Yeah. Narcissism. Then they depend on your ability to depend on them. Mm-hmm. One way to be free from all abusers in this life is to, to secure your freedom. The reason we work hard is not because we want money to flash. Yeah. It's because we want our freedom. freedom. That is true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Poor folks use money to buy luxury. Yeah. Wealthy people use money to buy freedom. Yeah, like that. You store it, you buy assets, knowing that should anybody try to mistreat you, you have the guts to walk out. Exactly. And you can survive. Because he who pays you controls you. But the poor folk is buying Gucci bags. <laughs> <laughs> Borrowing from Tala. Yes. To do luxury things. To appear wealthy. Yeah. To look rich. When they have zero freedom. Mm-hmm. While the employer is ordering their life like a slave. Yeah. Knowing you can't go anywhere. You're in debt. You're even taking advances. Mm-hmm. Avoid the salary advances. Oh. <laughs> work <laughs> with your money <laughs> work with your budget <laughs> yeah stay away from mobile apps they mm-hmm. identify your name yeah stay away from eating ahead mm-hmm. as far as you can live below your means yes. not within your means below below your means yeah. if 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 don't go beyond 50 percent mm-hmm. make sure your living costs are 40 percent and then you have the other percentage for development yeah. developing your assets Developing your resources so that you can always decide how to how to how to conduct your day. Mm-hmm. Nobody's ordering you. They can't shout you down when they know you have the capacity to walk out. Above everything else, above the cash, you need courage. Mm-hmm. You have two immunities against narcissistic abuse. Okay. Cash and courage. And courage. <laughs> <laughs> courage is the guts to dare. Yeah. Bramal, I want you to believe in God for one reason. Mm-hmm. He's the only person who can help you without conflict of interest. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Other people help you for as long as it's not conflicting. Yes. <laughs> and to have faith in God so that when you have nobody else to help you and people are trying to mistreat you, you can sing like David and say, when my father and my mother reject me, you will accept yeah, me. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And you can dare to venture out there. Keep, find yourself in the cave of Adulam. Everybody has to go through a cave experience. Mm-hmm. Homeless. You go to the rocks. Yeah. Go to the rock bottom. Mm-hmm. Go to hide there in the forest. And when he went there, God did not remove the cave. He, he brought others <laughs> who needed. <laughs> so, they call it... So, David was joined by the men who are depressed, in debt, yeah. rejects of society. Sometimes you're taken through the rejection so that you can relate with other rejected people. Yeah. <laughs> and using the rejected band, <laughs> he made an army. Yeah. The mighty men of David were previously depressed, rejected, in debt, collapsing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, I don't need to show people your strength too much. The strength of David could not win him. Yeah. Mighty men. Mm-hmm. He got mighty men through weakness. So appreciate your struggles. Stop resisting them too much. Yeah. If they threaten to fire you and you can't see way out, 
don't start bootlicking and worshiping. Mm-hmm. If it is cave of Adulam, go to cave of Adulam. Exactly. When you have the faith in God, you know very well. Your script is not being written now. Yeah. It was written before. Before. Mm-hmm. And there's no surprise with God. It may be painful, but he knows where to land. Yeah. Sometimes he does not put out the fire. He joins you in the fire. Mm-hmm. You three Jewish ma- young men yes. who are told to worship when when Nebuchadnezzar, when your boss tells you what to worship, mm. he's asking you to worship him. Yeah. Nebuchadnezzar wanted to be worshipped. Mm-hmm. But you worship him through what he dictates. When your boss is asking how to spend your Sunday, mm-hmm. how to spend your free time, how to spend your weekend, he's doing the same Nebuchadnezzar thing. Worship me. Yeah. <laughs> he's dictating your personal life. life. <laughs> to feel like you are his slave. Mm-hmm. There's a difference between offering service and offering slavery. <laughs> <laughs> you sign up for service, yeah. not slavery. <laughs> slavery is when you have no say. Yeah. You're objectified. Mm-hmm. And what those young Jewish boys said is that we respect you, but we will not do some things. We have another person we also respect. Yeah. And he was angry. He made the fire seven times. Some people are angry. They, redu- they increase your trouble, reduce your salary, yes. increase yeah. your duties, <laughs> you know, make the harsh conditions, conditions harsh. And when they were, were thrown to the fire, a fourth man joined them. Mm-hmm. And he looked different, like the son of the God. Yeah. Sometimes it's during that season of fire when another person joins you, when people see another element in your life, when another quality emerges in your life. Mm-hmm. Many people you see being courageous, the courage does not come from singing in a choir. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it came from singing in a crisis. Yeah. The Psalms David was writing, we enjoy them, but many of them came from tears yes. and pain. Mm-hmm. The one sign of narcissism is when you're in an environment where you do what they want, not what you signed up for, and they don't care about your well-being, and they are obviously jealous. Yeah. Clearly jealous of your success. Clearly jealous of your expansion. And they, they remove words from your mouth mm-hmm. by using the same language. You know, some of you think we just hold, want to hold you back, mm-hmm. but we're looking at the interest that come. Some, some of you think we don't want you to grow, but we're looking at the, the ultimate good. So they remove the words from your mouth. Mm-hmm. By detonating them. It's a psychological trick when you know you're doing something, something to a person. Yeah. You ask them whether they think you're doing that. Mm-hmm. It's a psychological t- game. Yeah. For example, a con man who is conning you keeps saying, do you think I can con you, my friend? Mm-hmm. They are conning you, but keep saying it to plant doubt about whether they're really doing it. Yeah. <laughs> I have seen that a lot. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and my father kept saying that it is the thief who invented the oath. <laughs> <laughs> it is the thief that invented the oath. <laughs> Trying to win your trust, confuse your doubts, make sure you have nothing is sure, yeah. everything is foggy. <laughs> they even tell you sometimes you hear people have been calling others out there, ourselves, my friend, we trust God, we talk, we believe we go to church, this mm-hmm. church we go to. Mm-hmm. Whenever you hear too many stories, mm-hmm. there's the, the, the lies are stitched in between. Truth is usually simple and clear. Yeah. Lies are too flamboyant, yeah. too talkative, <laughs> too yeah. even saying what you think because they know you're thinking it yeah. to remove it from your mind. If you stay in a narcissistic working environment, you will be broken down to a smaller version of yourself. Mm-hmm. And you need to understand that although we have discussed abuse, emotional abuse in the, in the relationship context, family context, many times what makes you condone and put up with abuse in the workplace is your fear of poverty, fear of being broke, fear of being helpless, fear, fear of your expansiveness. And I'm giving you the solutions. Mm-hmm. One of the solutions is maintain boundaries. You can't check out of every job because you have sometimes you have so many seniors, one of them will be narcissistic. Mm-hmm. In the, in, the, in the corporate ladder, it's not just always one boss ahead. There are so many. Yeah. <laughs> they try to throw extra work on you. Mm-hmm. They try to test you. They try not to show up and they want you to take up all the responsibility. The first, the first thing is fearless boundaries. Calm. There are some guys who do a series about how to professionally say. Mm-hmm. So they are saying one of them, this is none of my business. Somebody pushing the, you know. Yeah. And so they come up with a language of 
politeness, professionalism, that you can put boundaries and say, I understand this does not fall exactly within my purview of duties. Mm -hmm. uh, so I hope you find someone else who assists you with it. You have already said that's none of my business. Yeah. <laughs> Politely. <laughs> <laughs> and and they, they, they are, you find ways of expressing politely that you're not easy to push around. Mm -hmm. They're usually testing and they threaten you with the firing. They threaten you with the reporting. Yeah. One technique of narcissists is they, they, they dangle warning letters. They write it and they keep it there. Mm -hmm. It's a threat to make you obey everything they want. Yeah. Whenever you join a job, I want you to start by imagining if you lost it, under what terms you will not agree even if you are to lose this job. Mm -hmm. The bare minimums, under which we never have to lose it. It's okay, yeah. but I can't work under that. But and one of all those involve exploitation, disrespect, being assumed, being pushed, being you know harassed. Mm -hmm. You need to have bare minimums that you do not do not engage. Under these ones, I can't engage. Mm -hmm. You know, once people know that you have that independence of mind, they become afraid of you. Yeah. When narcissists are afraid of you. They tell everybody you are bad, you are mm -hmm. crazy, mm -hmm. but they leave you alone. That's what you're looking for. Yeah. I don't want you to go to the workplace to look for family feeling. Because they're trying to create community, they use the word family. family. That is what you, what you are actually mistake for. And, and just understand it, they're saying community. Mm -hmm. Because we want to have a team that is cohesive. We can use that language of unity. Yeah. But I want you to know this is only another context. This is not the family where we are here mm -hmm. for each other. Yeah. No. We are here for ourselves, mm -hmm. but because the duties require coordination, mm -hmm. we still need to be united. Yeah. So work with the camaraderie. Mm -hmm. If you're lucky to find a genuine friend among your colleagues, you're just lucky. Yeah. That's not what you came for. Mm -hmm. Maintain professionalism and courtesy. But the friends with whom you become vulnerable, let them be there, out there. Mm -hmm. You become vulnerable with a colleague and then you fall out. Where will you go? Where will you go? People mistake. Yeah. Don't become vulnerable with your colleagues. Mm -hmm. Even in emotional moments, mm -hmm. many people have exposed how their family is doing, how they are quarreling with their lovers, how this is not working. And then you, you teach people you are in nakedness, your life. And then even after you have moved, they start commenting about it. Mm -hmm. They start harassing you over it. Just because we are seated, six of us, in one room, does not mean now we are friends. Yeah. Don't let the physical closeness draw you. Some people are only comfortable with you when they don't know you. Yeah. But if they hear that you are doing well, Oh, you know, my child graduated, you know, the other one went to the US, you know, my husband bought this, mm -hmm. you know, my wife is this good, you know, we got into this home, you know. You're exposed to colleagues, many of them are so envious and jealous, they are going to take it upon themselves to make your life difficult. Mm -hmm. You do not have sex or you do not have relationships with the colleagues. You're going to date a colleague whom you think there's a genuine chance of making it. Mm -hmm. You date out there, here you remain colleagues. Yeah. You meet for your coffee dates out there and you come here, you remain professional. So that if it is dying, it dies out there. Out there. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> if it's thriving, it thrives out there. Because even many companies don't like it yeah. when you're falling in love. Mm. They say you are compromising the, the larger goals. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> when you're just rattling their spirits, yeah. just disturbing their jealousy. Mm -hmm. It's jealousy, there's nothing else to it. One is to have clear boundaries of what you will not accept yeah. under whatever circumstances. And Brahma, even if you are doing a job that is very rare, mm -hmm. like media stations are few, mm -hmm. and the people they can hire are only so many. Yeah. While universities are churning out journalists, so many every year. So there may be a threat. If you lose this show, where will you get mm -hmm. another one? Mm -hmm. You shall never look at the market to look at your competence. Exactly. You shall look at your competence. And how the, what the market needs, this kind of competence. People like us came up with a career that nobody was talking about. Mm -hmm. It's a bad thing. You know, when the name of your career, you need to teach people. <laughs> you know, no more people are asked where they work. Yes. Because their career is understandable. Yeah. I'm a banker. So which bank are you working with now? In our radio present. Which radio are you with though? Uh, what if you're a life coach? <laughs> You'd have to explain. What is life coach? <laughs> Some of us, we have multiple obstacles. Yes. Apart from selling our services, we have to teach people the name of the service. <laughs> what are your chances of showing them they still now need what you have introduced? <laughs> Without confidence, you couldn't make it in a career like comedy. Mm -hmm. 
and Churchill is there saying by by, by work is to joke joke so joke <laughs> you think we're here to joke <laughs> he needed a lot of courage yeah. to tell people that it's actually a relief <laughs> Are you talking about MCing? Okay, no, no, not quite MC. <laughs> Just making people laugh. <laughs> okay, you make me laugh now. Illustrate. You know somebody asking you to ask to illustrate. <laughs> make us laugh. <laughs> I mean, of them are not possible to make laugh. Yeah, they don't. They, they are not funny. They even they are they are already resistant. This to say, a lot of times what you are dealing with is. People see that you have potential, and if they let you fly, either you will go away, or you'll outshine them. Yeah. And they see your dedication. There before, when you were young, you thought only those who are younger than you can be envious yeah, of you, yes. mm -hmm. or your colleagues. Now you know seniors can be intensely narcissistic, envious of your success because they see this the way the way at which you are shining. You will you will bypass them. Yeah. Many people mentored you well and they were happy to see you coming up. Mm -hmm. But when you surprised them <laughs> by surpassing certain milestones, <laughs> they changed. Yeah. They stopped being kind. They stopped being considerate. And part of why you're going to struggle in this life is when you do not tolerate the idea that you're supposed to keep distance with your seniors. Mm. Safe distance. They may call you my son, they may call you my daughter, they may call you this endearing language. Don't fall for it. Mm -hmm. If you have father issues, pay therapists. Yeah. Go reconcile with the father you never had. Mm -hmm. Now, when I teach people to reconcile with the father wounds and mother wounds, I tell them you don't have to go to the physical father. Mm -hmm. Father is an energy. Mm -hmm. So you make peace with the fact that you did not get it and you can get it for yourself. Yeah. When you break down the father energy, you realize it provides you belonging and identity. Mm -hmm. Just stability and anchoring in this world. If you can get that on your own, you've fathered yourself. Mm -hmm. I am so and so. I stand for this. Mm -hmm. I this is what my security in this world. I can feed myself. I am competent. I am secure. I am charming. People like me. That's what dad was supposed to do. Yeah. And we said there are two levels of presence of a dad. Mm -hmm. If you do not have both, get therapy, educate yourself, mm -hmm. and compensate for it. Otherwise, it will feature in all your decisions, career choice. Partner choice, money negotiation, it will affect your life negatively until all your life. It happened with Mephibosheth, it happened with you. You went through trauma for Mephibosheth's physical, physical war, where the dad died, the granddad died, he survived miraculously. Some of us, you come from dysfunctional families where it was war, emotional war. People were destroyed. We survived, but we have not thrived because we did not in replace what what got lost in the war the father support the mother support mothers provide love validation acceptance okay they provide that the language you hear mothers using that it's mothers who teach children not to talk yeah they talk well vocabulary that is funny mm. ma b oh they are talking to a baby that is at their back you wonder who are they talking to mm -hmm. and there's an exchange yeah. this before the child knows how to talk the mommy introduces the idea of talking. Yeah. Is the mother who introduces the, the breastfeed and the child is looking and they're meeting their face? That's when the mother is teaching the child. Yeah. So that's when your mother gives you, I see you, you are likable, you are attractive, you are beautiful, you are handsome. That affection comes from mother. Mm -hmm. When you do not have emotional presence of your mother, you don't feel lovable, you don't feel lovely, you just feel like you're a commodity, just have to give everything to win an attention, your life is transactional. Yeah. Even if she was there physically, but she was not there emotionally. That's why I don't want you to get 10 children. You, do, you can't distribute enough affection among, among 10 children. That's one reason Africa is so dysfunctional. Mothers got more children that they could attend physically. They were getting them as labor mm -hmm. for the farm. <laughs> Competition with the co-wife. <laughs> <laughs> All the wrong reasons. Mm. One of them might become president. Mm. <laughs> Guess what? Can you imagine? People are getting children for speculation. I don't know what they might become. Let me throw many. <laughs> that was speculation. Imagine. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah. And they even tell you John Mishuki was child number 28. Yeah. So if, he, if, if the mother had stopped at 27. <laughs> <laughs> That's speculation. <laughs> 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 Brother, get children with calculation. Mm. Not Speculation. <laughs> Get the children you can invest in. That's why in Africa, any child who had special needs wasted. Mm. 
Yeah. There was nobody to attend to them and make them make any... Uh, people like Temple Granton, some of the biggest inventors in the US, had autism. In Africa, when you have autism, you're bewitched. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the child was attended so well, despite the autism, their gift blossomed. Yeah. Here, you don't even need to have autism. You just need not to be bright in class. Yeah. That is enough. <laughs> yeah, then you are, you are finished. You are finished, yeah. <laughs> you know, while at the same time, the guys that, like Richard Branson, who could not perform in class, somebody still nurtured the talent. And the guy is a multi-billionaire changer of a generation. Exactly. The quality of parenting produces the quality of the child. Mm. Stop speculation. <laughs> Do calculation. Get a child who you are going to invest attention, validation, support. You hold their hand. And we were saying the other day that the way to raise a strong-willed child is not to break their will. Mm -hmm. Not to beat them down until they are weak and say yes to everything. Yeah. It's to love them until your disappointment is their punishment. Right. Their, your disappointment is their punishment. You love them so sincerely, they get dependent on how dad is just sincere and supportive and there for me. Mm -hmm. I can't disappoint my dad. My dad says you should be go home by sunset. And when I'm home by 7 p.m., my dad was disappointed. Mm -hmm. I can't face that again. I like our evenings with dad, the way we tell stories, the way we sing songs. That's your daughter, who is 17, at the so-called rebellious age. But the relationship you have with her, she can't stand seeing you disappointed at her behavior. Mm -hmm. There's a place, of course, for correcting the cane of correction. Mm -hmm. But that should not be your norm. Your norm should be love. Right. And you're not trading the love. Mm -hmm. You're making them genuine friends. And letting them know, you know, you trust them. Yeah. And when they drop the ball, tell, you know, I did not expect that from you. Mm -hmm. What happened? You know, this happened and you could not call and inform us. Oh, you know, she was carried by the hype. And now she looks at how she's disappointed. And the whole evening, there's no lovey devil with that. Mm -hmm. Because of the atmosphere she has created. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow you're picking up. And then she remembers. The day I disappointed, I don't like the day I disappointed dad. Yeah. And we did not have our normal evenings. Mm -hmm. I like it when we tell stories with dad and we're just there chilling. You want your son to say, I want to kick ball with dad. Mm -hmm. When you are a friend to a child, they tend to obey you more to preserve the friendship yeah. than fear of being caned, <laughs> being policed, being reported. Yeah. And tell mothers to stop telling children, I'll tell your dad. So they, they, they make me like to look like the bad guy. <laughs> if you mess up, I'll tell dad. <laughs> Deal with the case yourself. You're also a parent. Yes. <laughs> why are you giving me the, the ugly role? If they messed up when I was not there, yes. why are you making me the punisher? <laughs> why am I the discipline master? I also want to be a friend. Why are you pushing the ugly roles to me? Yes. I'll tell dad. When dad comes, you'll see it. Stop doing that. I'll tell dad. No. <laughs> I don't want to be the one who's associated with the punishment. I just want to be associated with the friendship. friendship. Yes. <laughs> Deal with the issue yourself. <laughs> so, we are saying, sometimes you are staying there because you are used so much yeah. to being tramped on, you know, uh, walked on and used, and being voiceless. We are saying, most of the time, if you learn to put boundaries, you're going to lose some things. Okay, I know you are told to no, to learn not to say no, but they did not tell you the cost of the no. <laughs> <laughs> it comes with a cost. <laughs> it's not free. The saying is free, yes. but the consequences <laughs> come later. That is what most of us fear. You know, <laughs> there are people you say no and they retaliate. Yeah. They insult you. They break associations. Mm -hmm. They disappear. You need to be prepared. To stand alone. Yeah. So the one thing to overcome all narcissism at work, abuse, manipulation, mental games, is boundaries and say, I will not take more work. I will not take disrespect. Next time they are busy, you know, there's something called narcissistic rage. Mm -hmm. When they flare up in a verbal attack and they descend on you. You make him my life horrible. Mm -hmm. What kind of workers are you? Every time I to tell you. How to when, they, when they pick that tone, don't panic and you're saying, I'm sorry. Look at them straight in the face, yeah. calmly. They will be shocked. That doesn't happen. When they intimidate people, people usually react. Yeah. And you to surprise them. Even if you are walking out, come back and sit there. And don't say anything. When there's a silence that is awkward, tell them, I'm waiting for you to finish. Mm. When you're done, let me know. That's your boss. I'm talking about your boss. Mm. They have already crossed the boundaries of respect. Now you can't stay there saying, I'm, you answer me, I'm your boss. 
you're my boss but i'm also human yeah i also have rights to be treated with decency you can just say i would appreciate if you don't communicate to me in that manner mm -hmm. again be ready for them to fire you instantly yeah. do you know i can fire you i do calmly don't worry when you can compose yourself when people are trying to intimidate you mm -hmm. You'll be surprised how they run away in fear. Yeah. Even if they fire you, that was not an environment you're going to thrive. Yeah. Let me remind you, you're not serving people, you're serving God in that environment. Mm -hmm. Your assigner is God. This is a point of assignment along your journey of life. Yeah. Do not take... Daniel was serving in foreign kings and serving administrations. But he maintained his prayer and connection to heaven, window facing Jerusalem, praying routinely. And when they saw how he was shining and they want to set him against the king, they, they, they made the king to outlaw prayers. Mm -hmm. And the man could not stop praying. He went on praying. They caught him, took him to the king. King drew him to the den. He knew he is not here because of the king. He's here because of God. Mm -hmm. He threw him to the den of lions. The God shows up. Sometimes God seems quiet during peace. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. They underestimate your God when you're just praying yeah. and there's peace. Then they start up war. And then you remember Exodus 15, 3. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. Let war come so they see who, who is the Lord of war. And then the lions could not touch him. And then the king was converted to the religion of Daniel. Daniel yeah. And the guys who wanted to kill him were killed. Sometimes allow God to manipulate situations. Yeah. Sometimes you are afraid. It's not comfortable. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when I'm, a bad thing surprises me, mm -hmm. I feel some excitement mm -hmm. at how God will turn the story. Mm -hmm. Because I learned many times he is, more, he is a present help in time of trouble. More present. He is with you now. Mm -hmm. But when trouble comes, he is more present. <laughs> That's when he turns things. You are going and your car breaks down suddenly. Mm -hmm. I want you to learn to feel an excitement. Let me see how God will work this out. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and one lady told me when situations came and she... She could not even think a prayer. Sometimes God is not answering your prayer. He's answering his kindness. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's responding to uh, as a father. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he knows what you need. He has worked out things. The car tire bus is there while the guy who had the perfect tools to help you was just one trailing behind you. God had seen the problem, <laughs> organized the solution. Allied the right people for you. <laughs> yeah. You know, when you don't have God, life becomes too terrible. Exactly. You be, it's like you're in charge of your own life. Now, we are saying the second rule for you to overcome narcissism is to work for a higher cause than money. Yeah. Work for a higher cause than money. You need the money, even when you have a lot of money, let them pay you. Man money produces respect, mm -hmm. produces people to value. People value what they pay for. Yeah. Reason children ab ab abuse toys, they do not pay them. Mm -hmm. They do not feel the pinch. Mm -hmm. When you grow up, you don't abuse things. You know the pinch. You work to change things, to change life, to deliver better technology, to deliver better banking, to, to touch lives, to show kindness, to, be, to show integrity. And I hope some of the values you live for is integrity. Yeah. I, again, Job was complimented not for fasting, although he used to give sacrifice there. He was a prayerful man. Mm -hmm. He was generous. He told us his life in Job 29. He was a leader, influential, kind, generous. He was generous. He was philanthropist. He would help the poor. He would take up the cases, philanthrop finance cases for those poor people who are being harassed by rich. You know, and, and, But when God discussed in a summary, he said, he held to his integrity. I want you to maintain your integrity, your oneness. The fact that you don't have crack or shadow of turning. Mm -hmm. You may not be that consistent in your thoughts, in your personal life as you start out. But God is training you into that. The purpose of this life is to be made like your father. Mm -hmm. Children are born resembling their father. In terms of spiritual, you're not born resembling. You grow into resemble to be the full image of him. You grow into it. You transform to be integral like your father. Mm -hmm. That you don't change. I hope one of the values you live for and the one value you're working there is to demonstrate integrity. Yeah. And they, they know they can't corrupt you. Mm -hmm. They know you don't cheat. You don't lie. You work for other reasons. Yes, you deliver, but there's another boss whom you, like Joseph, I can't do this thing mm -hmm. and offend my God. Joseph was there like a slave, but he had a purpose of demonstrating the character of his God. Mm -hmm. They took him to prison, maintained the character of his God. He went to the palace, character of his God. 
the constant thing in Joseph's life, how we study him, was integrity. Integrity. I know when you come from the, um, the churches we call charismatic, mm -hmm. there are some things they value a lot. Mm -hmm. Like the favor. Mm -hmm. the, to be animated. So when you go to church, the one who is most animated is the one who has most attention. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I almost felt out of place. Because I could not quite produce that. <laughs> and you wonder what's wrong with you? <laughs> Some people hold microphone and they charge the atmosphere at once. They speak in tanks, they roar. And you're wondering why am I so happy? <laughs> you know, you, they, they disturb your self-esteem. You know, avoid people who lower your self-esteem. <laughs> Start questioning yourself. <laughs> Man, why, why, why am I so miserable? <laughs> I came to realize this, that was personality. It yeah. was not spirituality. Yeah. <laughs> Some personalities are animated. Others are more cow yeah. and composed. <laughs> Please, stop <laughs> stop getting intimidated by people's personality. It's not confusing it was spirituality. <laughs> Please. The difference between Peter and John yeah. was not spirituality. Personality. It was personality. Yeah. <laughs> Please. Peter looked more aggressive. He's always the one, first one to answer. Yes, very outgoing. <laughs> and John is lying on the on the teacher mm -hmm. and just leaning there. And then ask him, who is it? Jesus <laughs> <laughs> said, one of you betrayed. Then asking the boy, who is it? <laughs> <laughs> who is it? <laughs> so, eventually, it's the calmness of John. Yeah. That is downloaded the book of Revelation. Mm. Is the personality that can write, my dear ones, I wrote to you, my loved ones, my beloved, my beloved. John uses that term a lot. And in the Gospel of John, avoids, avoids the term faith and uses belief yeah. because he's trying to make it more relational. Faith and belief are the same, mm. but he's using the verb. He avoids the noun mm -hmm. because you realize you can miss the point because he's talking as if he's teaching my, my little ones. Yeah. If you believe, only believe. Yeah. Be the other guys are saying have faith. Mm. Okay, it's the same, <laughs> but it's, it's more intellectual. This one of only believe yeah. is more direct. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's the personality of John that needed to communicate. God is so multifaceted. He needed people to be so different to express different elements of him. So be true to the one you carry. <laughs> You know, sometimes you go to church and they're preaching and you're evaluating the sermon. Yes. <laughs> and you're quite disappointed at the shoddy preparation. <laughs> and the obviousness. <laughs> and you don't want somebody telling you to shout in there. <laughs> if it comes naturally, I'll respond. Can it be a conversation? <laughs> you know? And, and I, you can be disturbed when you don't know your personality. Mm -hmm. Then you learn to align, to have grace. To have grace because sometimes the people who, 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 are, who, are, who, are, who are performing that day, you're better than them. Yeah. Like cooking for a chef mm. or carrying a driver. <laughs> they have a lot of opinions yeah. of what you could have put in that meal, this recipe, how could have been better. Yeah. <laughs> because they are better than you. But when they have humility, they eat without questioning. Yeah. There will be times you'll be the chef, mm -hmm. but you're not the cook today. Mm. So, so they cook. <laughs> That's a lesser job than what you're used to. Grace is to remember there was a time you were also not a chef. Mm -hmm. You're not the expert. And somebody put up with you. Even today you remember some of your performances and you're embarrassed. Yeah. You want to follow them and delete them. <laughs> <laughs> that time there was somebody who was on your level now. Mm -hmm. And they felt the way you're feeling about it. Yes. But they did not dis disturb you. So you learn grace. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so it's to say... You learn to work for a higher purpose so that if they're disturbing you, you're not afraid. Mm -hmm. You know very well that you have to stand for what is right. Yeah. And if they don't agree to what is right, it's okay. Mm -hmm. They are not your ultimate boss. They are the coordinator in that context. And God says, and I told you the other day, you see these governments, you see these authorities, the Bible told you to obey authorities, mm -hmm. knowing that God allowed them to be there. Yeah. Whether they are true or they are not, just know that they were allowed to be there. Mm -hmm. Pray for your nation. Do that part. Do your part, but don't go out cursing. Mm -hmm. Told you to avoid opposition because in Africa, opposition has been confused mm -hmm. with protest and complaining. Yeah. 
and, and, and dissatisfaction and a, a bitter spirit and pessimism. Africa does not have objective opposition. Opposition is supposed to have alternative approaches to governance. Yeah. So that when you do this, the president does, the opposition should say, I would have done this and this would have been better. <laughs> you know, yeah. that's how you challenge. You should, why is this being done? No, it's supposed to be this way. But here in Africa, they confuse it with fighting to grab power. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> that is the biggest problem. You know, yeah. it, it, it's, it's greedy, it's selfish. Yeah. It's not nationalistic or patriotic. You don't have, you hardly do get patriotic people. Mm -hmm. So it's to say, I don't want you to work for just money. I want you to work for purpose. Yeah. Knowing that sometimes it's time to elevate. Or it's time to, sometimes elevating does not mean changing. Mm -hmm. It's elevating in respectability. Yeah. You deliver so well, people are trying to fight you, you withstand the wave, you continue with your work, they learn not to throw stones your way. Mm -hmm. Okay, the last thing we want to discuss today is how to overcome narcissism, abuse in the workplaces. I want you to continually heal. Sometimes those people are speaking to a wound. There's a parent who used to call you stupid. Yeah. So much you are called stupid and it doesn't register like a, an offense. Yeah. There's a parent who used to say you're nothing, mm -hmm. amount to nothing, so ugly. Who and then you have a person using the same language on you. Sometimes it's even a colleague, not a person having an authority over you. Mm -hmm. But because it is so familiar, again, you come to workplace driven by the need for independence. Mm -hmm. So many times you arrive when you're not healed. Yeah. Be careful. Mm -hmm. The precedence you set when you're coming to workplace. This is another reason that you should use your first money mm -hmm. to heal. Go for therapy. Mm -hmm. Get books. Accustom yourself to knowledge. If you're in college, save yourself the trauma of recovery. Start early. I bought my first book in college when I was in college using my pocket, my health loan, my government loans, mm. student loans. And I felt like my, my, my nail was being plucked away. It was 1,699. A lot of money. A lot of money, yeah. But the book changed my life. And it initiated me to the life I'm living today. Mm. Many young people are thinking of the next mobile phone. Mm. You know, the next movie, the next this, the next fancy, the next night out, yeah. the next party, the next, the next. I want you to be one who buys books. Mm -hmm. I want you to identify another you like and consume everything they produce. Exactly. Interact with their mind. Internalize their spirit. Word created. You are created by a breath. Mm -hmm. Make sure the right breath reach you. You are created by truth. Make sure you accustom yourself with truth. Yeah. You are created by knowledge. You say, he knew you before you were formed in your mother. I knew you. Mm -hmm. Get that knowledge. You don't live by bread. <laughs> by mm -hmm. every word. Not some more hands. Mm -hmm. Don't go through this life without reading the Bible from cover to cover. Don't. Mm -hmm. You'll have missed the most important thing in this life. In this life. To be embarrassing. To find out what you could have learned and done. <laughs> yeah, do you take the time to read? Mm -hmm. Don't read the social media. Don't Facebook more than you face your God. Mm -hmm. Don't go to dancing entertainment more than you more than you go to building. Yeah. War to the city whose kings are boys and they party during daytime. You are the king of your life. Mm -hmm. Don't go looking for entertainment during working hours. Always work more on yourself than you work on your job. Mm -hmm. You recognize abusers from a distance when you know what you deserve and what is decent, what is not decent, because you are studying and you're learning. Don't wake up late, don't sleep late, don't fight with your alarm. A poor workman fights with his tools. Don't argue with your alarm clock. Sleep early. You struggle to wake up because you're sleeping too late. You're too tired. Doing nonsense. You're staying in bed flirting with a person until 2 a.m. Mm -hmm. Until you sleep there on the phone and you don't even have enough sleep. You're dragging yourself because you're not well kept. You're not well polished. You dressed in a hurry. You woke up anxiously. You went to the vehicles late. You paid too much money. Climbed the car through the window. You were pushed this. They stopped before they reached town because it was rush hour. You had to walk another distance. Hey, do you woken up just one hour earlier? You'd have been at office cheaper, smoothly, Peaceful, prepared, better, rested, fast, done some of the work. Two hours of organizing your life could have saved you mountains of stress. Exactly. The same people used to pay 150. The same distance you can pay 30 shillings. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you pay a lot of money. There's a lot of congestion. And a guy woke up early smoothly. The road was empty. Yes. <laughs> they paid cheaper. <laughs> the difference was two hours of organizing. Mm -hmm. You woke up at six. The guy woke up at four. You woke up at 7, they woke up at 5. They left early smoothly and they carry their touch-ups. 
You see them doing their touch-ups. You see them doing their preparation. You arrive at work, they have finished their first shift. Okay, at nine is when most people start their first shift. Other people, that's when they finish. Their first. <laughs> and because they are ahead, they look poised. They look in charge. They are ahead. They sleep early. They leave you online arguing and talking nonsense and following dirty things. And they sleep at 9.30. Yeah. You stay online until 12.45. <laughs> when you are, you are starting your first shift of sleep, they are finishing? The first shift of work. So, you come to bed at 1. Then they are turning the first, uh, now, the, the, the first time. Yeah. <laughs> Let me tell you, by just planning better. Don't think of your waking time. Think of your sleeping time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You lose control of your evening. You drift, drift. Long phone call over nothing. Wrong chatting. Long movie. Wrong time. You eat the sugar at 10. Very sugary things. Sugar rush comes. Mm -hmm. By the time it disappears, two hours are gone. You are in bed, tossing, turning. You are on screen. Screen here. At 11. Screen. <laughs> <laughs> Following memes. We are hearing things laughing in the blanket. Yeah. <laughs> Midnight. Your phone had to die of charge yeah. so that you can I sleep. sleep. <laughs> <laughs> so, continually learn yeah. so that you can learn what is healthy, mm. what does not work. Yes. Yeah. And I like that. And talking about continually learning, Benjamin, that is why this conference that we are organizing is very, very important. Yes. That is why you need to build in yourself, my dear listener, invest And more. let's emphasize that healing, you can heal yourself or you can also plug into forums of healing. Exactly. What we are doing on June 10th is a forum to help you in your healing journey. Thank you. In yourself becoming. June 10th, mm -hmm. we tell you right, investment is 7,500, 0701-299-333 is my number, or Benjamin Zulu Global at Gmail, or Benjamin Zulu Global on all social media. All right, there you have it. Asante Sala, my brother. See you again next week. God willing. This is the Benjamin Zulu Global. Welcome our viewers from all over the world to the home of the heart moments. We are converging to learn together because when you know better, you can do better. And a better life is what we all want. Better work life, better family life, better personal life.